We get to now what is probably my favorite gospel uh, passage. And um, it's a big skip from where we were yesterday. This is after the resurrection now, where yesterday we were just before he was going off to his, his passion and death. And the section right before this in the gospel, we heard way back when, at the very beginning of Easter, that first week of Easter, and that they never finished the story, so I don't know if they, liked, they thought it would be a good bookend for, for Easter. I don't know why they did this in the lectionary. But, uh, so here we have where Jesus, Jesus comes to Simon Peter. This is after, you know, they had miraculous catch of fish, and he made a charcoal fire, and Jesus made them breakfast, which is just awesome. Jesus making them breakfast. And he says to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he asks him, do you love me with agape love, with divine love, with the total self-willing, self-giving love? And he asks, do you love me more than these? And that's been interpreted a couple different ways. It could be that Jesus is pointing to the fishing that he's just been doing, saying, do you love me more than these things? That you'll give up everything to follow me. Or it could mean that he is speaking about how Simon Peter at the Last Supper, you know, after he had like three glasses of wine, said, Lord, should everybody else leave you, I will not. I will die for you. And Jesus says, should, will you die for me, Simon? No, uh, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Is it that he's saying, do you love me more than these others do? You're going to put your, your mouth again where it was before. And Simon Peter says, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. But where Jesus is asking for that divine love, that agape love, he's, at, he's saying, Lord, I'll love you with a filial love, with a human love, with a brotherly love, with an affection. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you with a brotherly love. And Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. Now when I read that this morning, suddenly in my mind was this song that we sang in college in the choir uh, by Nathaniel Dett. Listen to the lambs. Listen to it sometime online. It's on, it's on YouTube. Nathaniel Dett. Uh, listen to the lambs. Listen to the lambs all a crying. Listen to the lambs all a crying. Listen to the lambs all a crying, all a crying, all a crying. Of course, that's the bass line because that's what I sang in choir. But, um, and then we go into this soprano singing, and he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. And, and as I was praying through this, I hear this in the back of my mind, listen to the lambs all a crying. And Jesus sang to Peter, Feed my lambs. Feed my lambs. Simon, son of John, do you love me with a, a total self-giving agape, divine love? Lord, yes, you know that I love you with a human type of love. Tend my sheep. Simon, son of John, and this time it's different, Jesus says, do you love me with a human, filial, affectionate type of love? And says Peter was distressed. Is he distressed because he asked him a third time? Or is it distressed that he said he wasn't now keeping that bar high, not expecting him to go that high? I don't know. But he's lowered the bar for him to where Peter can actually reach. Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Now, if you were to put together a list of uh, the qualifications that you would look for in, for instance, the Pope, or a bishop, or even a priest. You know, you might have good administrator, great preacher, uh, you know, whatever those may be, but would love of Jesus be there? And that's, that's what Jesus is saying is absolutely necessary. To be Pope, First and foremost, you got to love me. 
And we know, of course, he asked three times because Peter denied him three times. There's so much richness to this, and I hope I'm not kind of like, as one of my priest friends said about his seminary professor when they would give a practice homily, he says, I wanted a peach and you gave me a fruit salad. <laughs> May, I hope I'm not all over the place with this, just giving you too much stuff, but there's so much richness to this gospel. And Jesus saying, yes, you denied me. Yes, you turned away from me three times. Now I'm asking, in order to reestablish you, I'm asking you to tell me that you love me three times. And even if you can't reach to that agape, okay, you can reach to the filial, you can reach to the human. And then, when you were younger, you used to go where you wanted, but then someday, when you're older, they'll lead you where you do not want to go to that agape, where you will be able to give that self-giving love that you promised at the Last Supper and failed so miserably at. Someday you will be able to give that, dying for me. He says, follow me. At the heart of the gospel is love, and it's so easy to fall into a legalistic mentality. The exorcists are very clear when they say that Satan is a legalist. He will cling to whatever legal hold he has on a particular place and it's, uh, or a person, and he, he will follow the law to the letter in order to cling to his power. But at the very heart of God is love. And the law that we follow is a law of love, not a law of legalism. We have to remember that because sometimes we can, we can fall into that trap of, well, I've got to do this and I've got to do this. Back when we had Deacon Tom here, he would have said, no, 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 it's not that I got to do it, it's I get to do this. Right? You remember you used to say that all the time. I don't have to go to Mass. I get to go to Mass. I don't have to listen to Father Vaughn. I get to listen to Father Vaughn. That, okay, that's a stretch, but... <laughs> that at the very heart of everything we do is supposed to be love. And if love is not there, what we do is worthless. And if we're in a situation where there is no love, Mother Teresa says, bring love and love will be there. May we allow God to come and transform us from the inside out, calling us to that total self-giving love and then giving us the grace to be able to follow that call.